32-bit generation of gaming was a very special time period. Consoles would experience a new era of 3D accelerated gaming, and the Sony PlayStation would be at the apex of this new age. Many innovative and now classic titles made their way on the console, so it's no surprise that emulation for this system in particular has been pretty rampant with development. One such emulator just happens to be a RetroArch core, and it goes by the name of Beetle PSX HW. As usual, I want to do a quick walkthrough to show you how you can bring some old gems back to life in ways you may have never thought possible. So let's get started. The core we are going over requires a decent PC to really take advantage of all the features. With that being said, there is another core for lower end machines that goes by the same name with the HW omitted. Remember that in order to run this core, it will require a BIOS. It's also important to note that this core can run on both OpenGL and the Vulkan renderer and is required for certain options. Once I loaded my game of choice, I will toggle the quick menu button so we can look at some important options. You have a choice of using the software renderer, which is more accurate but is very demanding, or the hardware renderer, which takes advantage of a dedicated video card, which allows you to raise the internal resolution. The renderer may automatically switch to OpenGL or Vulkan the minute you choose the hardware option. This option only works if you have chosen the software renderer. Turning it off can result in some speed up, but may cause some bad artifacts in the process. This option will help smooth out 2D elements when upscaling the resolution. This is especially good for a game with pre-rendered backgrounds, like the ones used in the Final Fantasy games. The super sampling option is a great way to get the sharpest picture from screens that have a lower resolution. For example, if you like to game on a TV with 240p resolution, the original resolution used during that period of time, you can up the internal resolution to as high as your system can handle and turn on super sampling. This will result in a much sharper picture. As you might have already guessed, this option will increase the internal resolution. The core starts at the native 320x240 resolution. Texture filtering helps to improve the pixelation on 3D textures. Originally, this only worked with the OpenGL render, but since August of last year, there has been an update that fixed the issue. The widescreen mode hack will change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. Bear in mind, certain in-game interfaces may look stretched when using this option. Probably the most exciting feature of this core, CPU frequency scaling allows you to overclock the emulated CPU of the PlayStation. As a result, games that originally ran at 30 frames per second can now go up to 60 frames per second. Certain games will require a game code hack to unlock the frame rate. You will also need a pretty fast CPU to make this work. Unless you are just nostalgic, you can turn this off and it will bypass the PlayStation introduction. I do believe there is just a small issue that comes up near the end, but this is nothing that keeps the core from running. This option is mainly for frame rate enthusiasts and those looking to use the overclock feature above. It is more accurate than RetroArch's overlay option, and you should not have them turned on at the same time, as they will conflict with each other. That is pretty much as far as my knowledge goes for settings. I'll be putting a link in the description box below for additional details. Hopefully you will have fun using all the great features that Special Core has to offer. As always, this is the Core, your resident entertainment techie, signing out.